Michael Famoloti from Vetiva Capital just step out of the studios while discussing the impact of the uh, rising deadly insecurity, deadly clashes between herders and farmers and other criminal elements in Nigeria's food basket region that are still making the headlines. That will have implications for Nigeria's agricultural output, but now that will be felt in the consumer market, and there's no question about that from animal feeds to animal production to the core vegetables and tubers and jams and other things that we get. Now we've already seen tomato prices uh, ticking up and that sends a signal in my head. Let's I talk to Adesola. She's back here for the second time this week from, fin uh, from Financial Derivatives Company. Good morning, morning Dam Larry. It's good to have you here on the program for the second day. Now, this is uh, very interesting. Let's uh, talk a little bit more from the world of agri commodities okay. and take it off from where Michael left it off a little bit about mm -hmm. what we're spending into agriculture. But the first quarter agri output in GDP wasn't uh, really rosy as we would mm. think. So now we have this increase in violence and folks are going to leave their farms and mm -hmm. villages. They're going to think perhaps it should be safer to go to the cities uh, mm. and, and manage whatever they can make up with their lives mm. when they're not sure of whether they'll wake up the next morning or by the, whether they'll be alive or whether their farms will still be there or someone would have stolen their cattle. Because this story about mm. this violence goes both ways. Yeah. If you still hundreds or dozens of my, of, my, of my cattle or cows, if you want to put it, mm -hmm. that's an economic loss to me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. Retaliating in a deadly way is a different story, uh, which is a crime, uh, on the other hand. But it's a lose-lose it's a situation. Nobody mm -hmm. wins here. Yeah. So if you see, like, so in, you know, when I was here last, we were talking about the implications for some commodities. We've yes. seen now that the prices of onions have actually increased by up to 40%. It was a sack of onions was about 18,000 last month, and this month it's, it's up to 25,000. And we know that it's produced in, in the 25. northern... Yeah, That's 25, about 7,000. Yes, about 7,000 increase, about 40% increase. And I was having a little bit of this conversation this morning mm -hmm. uh, with my wife and about onions. And mm -hmm. it's just like... I was surprised and she's talking about a bag of onions and it was the first item she mentioned and I said, hold on a second, onions? And she mm. said, yes, the prices has gone up. Mm -hmm. Now you put in figures to it mm. that from 18, we're doing 25,000 mm -hmm. naira per sack. So we're, we're used to, I mean, onions is one of the cheapest um, vegetables that you can find out there. So, But the price has, has increased significantly over the past month and we know that it's, it's, it's a very significant vegetable in, on the Nigerian table. So, we, so I think mainly it's, it's due to the displacement of farmers on one hand, but then also on the other hand, because the harvest period for onions is around Q1. So we can, there's also an issue of um, thinning supply um, that is also eating into the prices, but then that combined with um, in the um, in reduced um, planting because of the displacement that is going on as well. I agree with you, because if you have onions already harvested in that part of Plateau State mm -hmm. right now, and I'm a transporter running a very small truck, I'm not sure I'll be inclined to drive into that area mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you have three local governments under curfew, mm -hmm. and all the security agencies are on and a lot, yeah. Yeah, so you don't expect me to drive in there mm. to, to bring any uh, onions mm, yeah, down so to Lagos or anywhere else. Whether it's the farmers or the distributors, there is, so people have yes. that increased um, sensitivity. If I'm going to dare the day or the night mm. to drive in there, I'm going to charge premium yes. on transportation yes. costs. And, so and that, that, would, that would eat to, into the prices as well. Yes, so. yes. So, so it, that looks like one bad news. And then also tomatoes are up as well, but that's mainly due to the, um, it was mainly the Ramadan season. So it went up to about but 23. Ramadan is over. Yes, so it's gone down now. So it went to about 23 mid-month um, during um, that 23, period, 23,000 for a basket of tomatoes. It's now about 20,000. But compared to a, a month ago when it was 15, that is, that is significant. So... <sighs> We're just quite, seeing quite, that. Quite, quite a lot of uh, not so good bad news. But let's, let's go through uh, a few other burning economic issues and we're back to the issue of electricity. Mm -hmm like a recurring decimal, like a musical chair. Keeps going round, then it goes left, then it goes right again. Mm. It's not stable. Yeah, so um, it actually inched up very, very marginal in the last um, couple of days. I think it gained about 5 megawatts, but it still um, boils down to the same issue. But we've seen now that the TCN has secured a loan from the World Bank, um, so we hope that, uh, but they want to e expand the grid. So currently the grid um, capacity is about 7,000, just over 7,000 megawatts, so they want to expand it to 20,000. So um, by, by 2022, um, that, that is an ambitious um, goal, but then with the, given the funds that they've received, we hope 
that something 2022 is about five years from now? Yeah, about? this is about five years. So if we're going to expand over the next five years, so we're going to be getting this money from the World Bank and, mm. and, and, and keep spending it to, mm -hmm. to have grid expansion. But folks want to see electricity, uh, but on grid power is still, is still a little bit down, about one-tenth of a percent I, I can see on this mm. But then if you also have, also as well, there's um, the gas at the GMD of um, NNPC was in Washington the other day saying that they want to um, boost Nigerians' um, gas output so that we could be 10% of the global market share. So they're on, on the generation front, you've seen a little bit of effort as well as on the transmission. What the NNPC wants to sell this gas to make money from the outside because it's, it's, it costs a lot more. But we need this gas here mm. as a feedstock for our own Jenkos. Yeah, yeah, for, for the for the Jenkos. And we haven't really resolved this pricing issue between I think, so that's so that's the thing there are problems on at each level so whether it's generation or transmission as well as the distribution so there's not that uh, much motivation for um jankos because i mean in the end they as you said it's more it's more profitable for them to export yeah, their if gas, I, if I'm a gas as producer. Opposed to sell it to um this as, as it were the price of of i don't want to use the word subsidized because the government isn't filling the gap of the difference in the prices but it's it's at, it's below where it's supposed to be right now and there's been a back and forth with the executive saying whether we should review electricity tariffs or not and so as long as they're continues with those fundamental issues we wouldn't see any significant improvement in power no tariffs until may 29 next year you that's, want, that, you want, you want to write that down it's not political like it's politically expedient no no, no 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 it's not so if, if i do a bet on that i'm gonna win anybody <laughs> everybody will win i know what is gonna do that but mm. you can be sure things will likely change after that uh do we have any words about artistian folks who uh angling to go on strike it's so it's still it's still the same thing we haven't heard it's really just down to the to, to the court the ball is now in the court of the government right right now whether to say oh you need to we're not doing anything about it or we're going to do something we'll start some sort of negotiations or just to show some efforts that because they gave they gave them two weeks mm. um to to get him out yeah, but, but these inf investments in power infrastructure as you put it in one of the good news will boot, boost the output mm. in, in the medium term as soon as Hopefully. you are boosting output this is 1.57 billion dollars mm -hmm. you get it from the world bank this is no free money we're going to have some moratorium i agree mm -hmm. but the government will have to come down on the rest of us to pay this money back and that's where the tariff for yeah. electricity companies. So whether it's so it's it's a cycle. So on one hand, it's, yeah, there needs to be an improvement. It's actually very important for there to be a review, an upward review of tariffs. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, if there is increased power output, we'll see the 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 ramifications in the economic output. So people would with the money that they would have used to buy diesel or to get um, alternative power generation, they would use it to put it into their business. And so then they would have more revenues and they pay more VAT. So it's just like a it's a cycle. So as you long as that, you seem to have that solution. You seem to have this solution. It's very elusive. And this is how it works. Mm -hmm. If you improve it, if government borrows money, whatever, mm -hmm. okay, fine. So you put it in, there's mm -hmm. an increased output. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily raise tariff. Yes. But because there's a availability of electricity, which is more stable mm -hmm. and regular, whatever it is, then you have increased productivity. Yes. So our productivity goes up, government brings its money back, while keeping tariffs mm -hmm. maybe at the current level. I think, I think it, needs to be, it needs to be reviewed. Yes. <laughs> I think it Upward. needs to, upwards, yes, it does. Uh, okay, as uh, much as I, I, I pay uh, bills too, so I know that for me, I would, this, I would rather stay so I don't want to step on the electric light, electric wire this morning. That's a very high, <laughs> high voltage. It's a sensitive topic. It's, it's highly inflammable. We don't, we don't want to hear it. No, I don't <laughs> want to step on any live wire this morning. Well, what is this issue with the higher diesel prices uh, coming into the conundrum of what we're trying to battle on the, uh, for consumers? So if we um, look at the basket of um, in refined crude oil, our imports, we see that 75% PMS and then about 10% um, diesel, the rest then kerosene and the rest take up the, the rest. But then, so we find that there is a thinning um, um, supply of diesel. So on one hand, it's a result of the thinning supply, the increase in price is a result of the thinning supply. And on the other hand, because as we've seen, power output has been very, very low in the last couple of weeks. And so we've seen increased demand. So the face of the lower supply supply in the face of um, um, higher demand has then pushed up the price about um, how many percent? It's now about 230 from about 220 um, about three weeks ago. <clears throat> Let's go back to the market and I'm sure our viewers always uh, <clears throat> appreciate this uh, domestic market price yeah. table. 
uh, and see where we are in terms of pricing, whether there's anything there that uh, I can take away. Yes, I can see tomato going on an uptick, but the rest looks a little bit on neuter. Yeah, so we've, um, most of them are stable because you know how it is, we, the way we do our service, we go to a couple of markets and then we get the average. Mm -hmm. And so we saw that um, while there were some, some people, you know how you just need to price, some, some people like for a bag of rice now, so there was a 500, 1,000 differential, but then at the same time, when we got the average, it was um, net net, it was, it was the same. So, but then, so it's everything else has been flat except for um, tomatoes, which, as I explained, is uh, just due to the. We expect that over time it would return to the previous price. When you do this market survey, what you're trying to do is to collect data, mm -hmm. and that's what we're seeing on, on our TV screen. But, but I'm sure there's a little bit of interactions. Yes. With, with the market women. Let's mm. put it that way. Or with the traders. It could be a man or mm. a woman. Uh, don't let the market women. <laughs> I would just say traders. Yeah, because it could, could be could be boss, yeah. it could be anyone else. So I've been to markets and you see guys selling pepper and onion and, and dry fish and what mm, have you. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so it could be anyone doing a trading business. Okay. Guys yeah. like that at in, in other parts of the world. Mm. So what are they saying really? What are their concerns about prices of goods, cost of transportation, cost of living and what have you? How do you feel? The rest I of think your team they're, they're, to their folks. major concern really is just the supply. So we've seen, um, so they do. So before, back in the day, if they, if you come to them and they say, oh, maybe they want to sell it to you five thousand naira, and you say, oh no, four thousand, they may they may succumb and then give you the money. But because they know that the the, the chances of them getting another supply, so supply basically is reducing. That's what I'm trying to say. So then they would rather just keep it for somebody else, the next person that is going to come who would uh, accept their price. And so we've seen. Um, so there's a little bit of that resistance going on and so um, usually when we bargain it's just in, just down to the best bargain and so we'll just then then they'll beat down the prices so, a little bit, so the traders are getting a bit reluctant yes because there's a problem with the supply chain yes and when we say supply chain in terms of domestic production mm. and perhaps even those that are imported because of their proper ports mm. problem mm. let's just use problems to 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 describe it with yeah. more worse than problem the folks are not really willing to, traders are not willing to say, well, take this at a lower price. Mm. They're always looking for a higher bargain because they're not sure of when mm. the next supply, the next supply is will going come. To come. So that I think it boils down to an issue of uh, um, distribution, as we mentioned, as well as even down on the production level for, for um, the commodities that are, are, that are grown here. Insecurity. Yeah, so we're talking so about yam, tomato. Yes. Rice, whatever, mm. it's all about insecurity and the supply chain here. And then also, on the other hand, because of increased exports now, we're, we're looking on this whole diversification narrative, and so it's actually mopping up domestic supply. So you have producers, it's more profitable for them to export their commodities as opposed to sell it in the domestic so market. So if I see market prices going on at the retail end, on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. whatever it is, um, Begin to two factors here, both internal mm -hmm. and internal infrastructure issues and insecurities. Yeah. So on the other hand, are those who are farmers who think there is a lot of money <laughs> to be made from outside the country. Rather earn the dollars, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the whiff of dollars. Mm. Everyone likes it. <laughs> it's just a great color that seems to get everyone. Uh, but if we go back to the global marketplace, and let's just spend about one uh, minute to look at what are the key stories around the global agri-commodities market? Uh, cocoa, are they part of this global trade or mm. war tariffs, whatever, trade and tariffs? Yeah, so um, the grains market is, so that, that's one of the concerns. So that's one of the things that's been pushing up the prices in the grains market. So that's wheat and corn. And so we have the, the new, with the China, the van that's supposed to be effective from July and so um, consumers, um, rather producers, product producers in, in U.S. are really just concerned about the implications of that on their on their wheat exports. And so we've seen um, that has had bullish momentum in that market. But also for cocoa as well, there's been the weather back and forth, Ivory Coast and, and um, cocoa and rather Ghana. But now it's, it's stabilized now, and so we've seen improved production. And so that's also another reason why prices are going down. Same with um, sugar as well. Prices are coming down due to reduced um, demand people with the whole health consciousness of um, um, obesity and um, diabetes and implications of excess sugar. Mm. So that has sort of just been what's been driving the sugar market. Okay. Uh, let's leave it there for today. Let's hang it in there for today. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Dami Lola, uh, Dami Lola from Financial Derivatives uh, Company. Let's go back after the break. We're going back to that 85-page document from Vetiva Capital on the state of the economy and the markets in the shadow of the 2019 elections.